friends welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is Kayla and if you're not new thanks for coming back always happy to have you today I am super excited to be bringing you another book review from one of my 2023 reads if you are new here I like to do a lot of book lifestyle reading writing content here on this channel so if any of those things interest you make sure you think about hitting that subscribe button sticking around joining the crew we'd be happy to have you today we have a book review of this poison heart by Kaylin Barron this is a book that I haven't heard a ton about um, I haven't seen it come across a lot of my bookstagram booktube book talk things and I haven't read a book by Kaylin Barron in a very very long time Kaylin Barron also wrote Cinderella is dead which is a fantasy retelling YA retelling of the classic Cinderella fairy tale I actually picked up this book for a series I'm doing on my channel of book recommendations based on your favorite Disney movie or Disney character. I mistakenly thought this was a Snow White retelling, which it is not. We'll talk about what it is in a second, but I haven't heard much about it and decided to give it a try. I did not really anticipate picking this book up so soon. I did get it in mid-February and typically when I buy books they sit on my, my TBR and they marinate for a little bit before I'm ready to read them, but something about this beautiful cover, this concept, really really drew me in so we'll talk about what this book is about but first I did want to note that this is not going to be a spoiler free review typically on my channel for book reviews I try and make them as spoiler free as possible because I think it's important for people to experience twists and turns and unexpected things throughout their reading experience and to not have those things spoiled for them but this book for this review there are some things that I need to talk about that relate to the ending and the twists and turns and secrets that are revealed throughout this book I will do my best to make a significant portion of this video spoiler free and save my spoiler filled thoughts for the end and I will let you know when that is so if you haven't read the book and you don't want the ending to be spoiled for you you'll be able to avoid that. This book upon further review and research is part of a series. I am struggling to determine if it's a duology or a trilogy. I do know that the second book is out but I do not know if there is a Third. As far as I can tell, this is just a duology and is completed on Goodreads when you click the little series icon. It talks about the second book, which is I think called This Wicked Fate, that is out and published. And normally when there's a third, they like have a teaser or they're like this Poison Heart number three, and there isn't one. So I'm going to say that it is a duology that is completed. But don't quote me on that. This book follows a young girl named Briseis. Briseis? Brie is basically what we call her and she has a gift that she can make plants grow by touch so she can take a completely dead plant touch it it comes back to life it's flowering it's blooming all of these good things maybe she can help the plant that is being obstructed I'm not a green thumb you can see that dead plant back there Brie would be able to fix that for me that was a risk I just took trying to lift all those books but she has this power she's very in tune with plants they kind of bend toward her they come back to life when she walks by they respond to her emotional state and her temperament she has this really beautiful power she also is immune to poisonous plants which is something she realizes throughout the course of this book that she can touch the poison from poisonous plants and she should die but does not. It does not even affect her. Um, maybe makes her feel a little bit numb, but beyond that, she walks away unscathed. Bree's living in Brooklyn when she is visited by this woman who is a lawyer who lets her know that her biological aunt, she is adopted and lives with her two moms, Bree's biological mother's sister, her aunt, has passed away and has left her a paid for estate in like, I want to say upstate New York or like somewhere out in the New York countryside suburbs away from the city. They go to this manor house and it is old and has not been lived in for many years so they're cleaning it up. They discover an apothecary where people have been coming for generations to buy herbal medicinal remedies for ailments and for different health issues that they've had. On this property that has like 40 acres of gardens, uh, Briseis finds a secret garden that is locked by a key where her aunts and her biological family tended to all these plants that they use to make herbal and medicinal remedies. In the back of this garden is a garden just full of poisonous plants um, which Brie then takes on the responsibility of reopening the apothecary, refreshing all of these plants, rebuilding the stores, and helping the people of Rhinebeck 
along the way moving to this town she meets young people some fun new friends and characters that play different roles throughout this story she has to deal with kind of this secrets and the stigma of the family she didn't really know her biological family how they were called here how they didn't know about her or how they did know about her and didn't ever seek her out what her family lineage looked like the role that this family played in this town all sorts of things and she unlocks this huge maze mystery of her family's secret history that's it in a nutshell upon further research this book is supposed to be a retelling of the secret garden by francis hodgson burnett and a play on some greek mythology i'll have some thoughts about that later in this video but if you don't know the story of secret garden which i did not know very well i used to watch the, the movie a lot when i was a kid i do remember that movie being freaking creepy <laughs> um and i did just buy a copy of the secret garden um in an effort to read more classics so we'll see but what i understand from the story is that follows this girl who was born and raised in india her parents didn't really want her kind of ignored her she was raised by servants and kind of became an insufferable child <laughs> and then her parents died and she is sent to live in a manor with her distant uncle that she's never met while she's living there she's kind of dealing with like being in a new place and kind of getting to know her cousin who is sickly and they find this secret magic garden where they play that's the extent of the parallels that i see to secret garden in this book but let's talk about some of the good the bad the ugly of this book First things first I want to talk about and it is kind of a dumb criticism I will admit up front um, and it is also not a criticism of the author this is a criticism of the publishing house this book was I think poorly edited <laughs> I will say that outright my sister and I have had several conversations about how satisfying it is to read a book and find a typo you just feel like a little bit smart I kind of find typos like once in a blue moon in books but i found multiple typos editing mistakes and things like this throughout this book i think by the time i finished reading i found like seven or eight which is a lot for one book like i feel like that's like a year's worth of typo finding and i found it all in this book i think that this book was just kind of sloppily edited um that they could have taken a little bit more time to line edit this book and make sure that they they got it right in some instances just like simple things like a word is misspelled or they forgot a word or the sentence is out of order or something like that very small errors but if you're when you're in the zone and reading a book it can be a bit distracting and there was a point where i was just kind of like reading to see like am i gonna find another typo Where's, where's the next one waiting instead of focusing on the story so it was a bit distracting um but if you like get yourself a little puzzle see if you can find the typos in here for me, this is absolutely a pro of this book and props to Kaylin Barron. Um, this book is very clearly so intensely researched. Um, the studies she had to have done on botany and plants and Greek mythology and all of these different things to pull together this story. This was a research feat and Kaylin should be so proud of herself because it's very clear to the reader that there was a lot of love and heart put into the research behind the writing of this book. I felt like while Brie is talking about different plants and about cultivating them that I felt like I was learning a lot along with her, learning a lot about plant life, about, a lot about Greek mythology as well, um, which I really appreciated. It felt like this book was not just an enjoyable reading experience, but also a learning experience, which I don't always feel about books. So this was really interesting for me. I loved the representation in this book. I feel like I talk about this a lot on my channel. I look for books that have representation of different storylines, different backgrounds, different experiences of life, and I feel like this one really kind of nailed it. Bisexual main character who is black, who was adopted by her two moms. Um, we see her go from living kind of in the heart of New York City to living out in the suburbs and how that changes her dynamics and interactions with people around her we also deal with some pretty heavy themes here which are spoken about and dealt with very carefully and very candidly that i think a lot of people could appreciate 
reading about them and I think that this is written in a way that is relatable to teenagers or to young people and then in written in a way that communicates with them at their level. For example, Brie in the beginning of the book talks about how they're living in New York, they're living in Brooklyn, trying to have a business and gentrification is a real problem for them and how it's affecting their rent and how they can't really afford to live in the city anymore um, because of the gentrification that hap is happening. Gentrification is a huge topic and a very, very big and involved but it brings it down to a real world understandable level for kids and for teenagers. And it's probably in a way that a lot of them could understand or relate to, which I think is super important. She also navigates growing distant with her friends and, and things and her friendship dynamics changing and feeling uncomfortable and weird as she's growing up and getting older, which I really like. That's a difficult and very real part of life and being a teenager and I think that she hand Kaylin Barron handled it really really well in an approachable relatable way for our readers. And one thing and this is maybe not something I would always say but I love that Brie was by no means a perfect character. Um, she talks about how her her powers had impacted her schooling and she wasn't doing super well in all of her classes. She wasn't like a straight A, perfect attendance, perfect academic kid. She had her niche interest that was really important to her that she was passionate about. And some of her other subjects kind of suffered because of that, but that didn't mean that she was any less of a kid because she didn't have straight A's and flying colors and she may not have passed every grade or may not have been on track to pass every grade, but she still had the hopes and the dreams and aspirations to do that. She still wanted to study botany in college, but just the way that her path to schooling went wasn't setting her up for success in that way. And I think that's also something that would be beneficial for kids to see that you may not, you may have a year where you're not getting the grades that you want to, but you can work toward it and keep working at it to be better and ultimately accomplish something. I think it's important to show kids the importance of using your passions to motivate you and drive you towards success. Even if you have an off year or an off term, it doesn't mean that your life is over and you can never find success. Um, you can use that passion to fuel you and motivate you forward. I loved the writing style of this book. I thought it was very, very approachable. It was very real. It felt like Brie was talking to us very, very distinctly, very clearly. And I know it was a first person narrative. Um, but it felt like I was having a conversation with Brie, which I really appreciated. And kind of her asides and her interactions with other characters, the way she describes things, it felt like we were having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I also think Kaylin Barron does a really great job in her writing with making these characters, a whole cast of characters, well thought out, well-rounded, real characters that feel like real people. There are different, um, like, vernaculars that she uses for different characters. There's different mannerisms or kind of jokes and tropes that char follow characters around throughout the story, which I thought was so great. It helped me to separate the different characters, but also to feel like I'm in a, a story with real people and real people that I would know in my own life, which I appreciated. I also love the pacing of this story. There was never a point where I was like, this is boring or this feels slow or there's not something happening, we're not learning something, we're not developing something. It felt really well thought out and well paced. If anything, if I couldn't read it was because I was too busy and didn't have the time to. But when I did, I would get sucked into this book. I would read like 75, 100 pages at a time of this book and it went really, really quickly as I was reading. I kept, we kept learning more and more and uncovering more and more secrets that I just, I wanted to be able to pull together the whole picture and it kept me moving and reading throughout the story. Along the same lines, there are a lot of twists and turns that are revealed to us and I felt like they were all, okay, maybe they were mostly reasonable and realistic and served the story well and I think they were also really well paced. There would be a time where something wasn't quite adding up and then boom, we'd be hit with the secret that was explaining exactly why things weren't making sense or weren't consistent. There were also enough breadcrumbed clues for you to figure out some things towards the end. You didn't have all of the pieces you needed to put together at the very end that had to be told to us at the very end of the book, but there were some things that I'm like, hmm, you're telling me this and I know to be suspicious of you and I'm gonna keep my eye on you because something's not adding up right. You told me something, but 
but now you're saying a different story. Um, so there were little clues like that that just put it on your radar to be watching certain characters a little bit more closely, um, which I really liked because I was like, oh, I know something is coming and I know I can't figure it out, but I am smart enough to pick up on the clue. Like there was probably only one twist that I was totally blindsided by, but there were others that did come and you're like, aha, I knew something was up with you, but I knew enough to expect that they were coming because there were some inconsistencies in character stories or their secrets or their body language, you know something is off with. So you're not necessarily able to solve the mystery on your own, but you are able to pick up on those little red flags and feel a little bit more on your toes as you're reading, which I enjoyed. Because I want to separate out a section where this is a little bit more spoiler filled, um, I will say overall I gave this book four stars. There were some things that I will talk about in the spoiler portion of this video that knocked it down a peg for me, particularly the ending. I did not quite love the ending of this book. Overall, I loved the concept. I loved the storyline. I loved the pacing of the characters. I loved the setting. The way that she describes plants and like botany and all of these things. I was sucked in from the beginning. I think this is a great, great book. Um, so I gave it four stars overall, but, and I don't know that I would read the second book in the series to be really honest with you. Um, but this book was four stars overall for me. I think this would be really fun to read with a classroom. As a former teacher, I feel like I compare a lot of what I read to in the classroom experiences. And I feel like this would be a fun buddy read or partner read with, um, either Greek mythology or the Secret Garden. I think this is a very loose retelling of Secret Garden, like, but I did think this was a unique concept. I think this is a cool kind of urban fantasy retelling of a classic story. It's lush, it's beautifully written. I think we have a great cast of characters who are representative. We're talking about different important themes and issues facing teenagers and young adults who are reading these books. Overall, I thought it was a great read and I did really enjoy the reading experience, despite the typos, and I read it very, very quickly, um, which for me is always kind of a hallmark of a good read. I wasn't reading this just to find out and get to the end. I was reading this because I was actually really enjoying the world we were in. I was enjoying my time exploring this manor. I was fully invested in this journey and along for the ride, not just getting to the end to get to the end and know the answer. I wanted to be along for that ride with Brie and Carter and Marie. I think this book is great for new adult readers, adult readers, young adult readers. I would say probably older middle school, upper middle school would be okay to read this book. Seventh, eighth grade and beyond. There's nothing super explicit or mature or adult about this. It's a very, very tame YA. I love what Kaylin Barron does with these stories, bringing LGBTQ representation and representation of people of color into classic stories, I think is such important work to be doing. And I think that she does a fantastic job of it. And I really did enjoy this story. So if you don't want to be spoiled, I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. If you don't be, if you don't mind being spoiled, stick around. We have just a little bit more to chat about. Okay. Are they gone? This is your last chance. Three, two, one. I gotta say <laughs> this video, this book felt just a hair distracted for me towards the end, specifically, I'd say the last 150 pages of the book felt like we were trying to do a lot in one book where they maybe could have been two separate concepts. Bringing together the mythology aspect and the secret garden all together, like the beginning felt very, very heavy on the secret garden. The ending felt very heavy on Greek mythology and it felt almost a little bit disjointed in the last 150 pages of the book. I think she did really cool things with the mythology here in relating to this book, relating the story and the lineage and who Brie is with a an ancient historical Greek myth. I think that's really, really cool to find real life relations and connections from Greek mythology to show the real people it was based off of and how those lineages can continue today and carry some of that inherent Greek magic, Greek god magic, I think is super cool. However, it felt like we were doing a lot at the very end of this book. 
this kind of feels like a different book now. It became less about the garden and less about Bree's power and more about the implications of the grief people she was related to from these myths that I was just like, and then we have like a witchy, like a, like a magic witch component. And we also have these like bands of magical folk that are trying to steal the power. It felt like so much happening at the very end of this book. I think they were cool incorporations, but it, for a little bit, especially at the point where we realize that Marie, that, that Brie has this ancient Greek text that she's reading that talks about the real story of Medea, which I would like to know what truth there is to that interpretation of the Medea myth and what the actual truth of Medea is if she actually didn't kill her children on purpose. Um, I would like to know what basis in fact that is. Um, but felt from that point on we were very much less about the garden and the magic and the power and more about lineage and Greek mythology and there were some points I was just like this feels like a lot going on. I don't know why for me it felt like, okay, I can buy into the fact that she can grow plants and is immune to poisons, but once you bring a Greek god back onto earth, I'm just like, you've gone too far. And that's kind of what it felt like. There was a moment, and I forget which character said it, but she was like, these gods still like sleep or walk on earth. And I'm just like, I don't buy it, man. Like that felt like a little bit too far of a stretch for me. Um, and it felt like it kind of distracted from the main purpose of the story. And I felt like we got samplings of people trying to like steal her power or to use her for her powers, but it never felt like a main conflict. Like it was always kind of in the peripheral. I felt like this book, the whole point was to figure out her family and her family history and to learn about this power and how to use it. But that was always kind of an issue in the back of her mind, but never really fully developed in this book. And maybe that was the point, maybe it wasn't meant to develop in this book, but it felt like it was discussed as a very urgent pressing matter, but was never fully explored in the pages of this book. We don't really know who these people are that are trying to steal this power. We don't know if it's a group or if these are random people or what she's going to do to protect herself from this happening again in this book. But that's always a constant worry that people are telling her about. And it's always like, you need to be careful. Like this is an urgent, serious, right in front of you thing, but it's never really addressed. And we don't see really where it's going. We don't know who the threat is. We never, that's never revealed to us really in this book right and that was super frustrating for me because i was like this feels like such a heavy big part of what you're doing in this series but instead we're talking about these gods coming back to earth and i'm like i'm sorry one person can only handle so much right you just inherited this house you've learned about this power these powers that you have now you have to deal with people trying to steal them and you have to deal with gods living on earth that feels like kind of a lot to balance all throughout one book and there were times where it just felt disjointed to me this may be an unpopular opinion or controversial opinion about this book, but I did not love the ending. I remember writing a note that when Bree's mom dies, when when Mrs. Redman kills Bree's mom, I remember being like, whoa, that's a super dark moment for this book that was unlike anything else that we had experienced so far in this book but I thought it was effective. I thought it was impactful. I thought it was a powerful moment. And I thought that would have been a really, really great moment. And it was for Brie to tap into her power and kind of take her power back, right? To fight back with that power, which she did in that moment. And I thought that that might've turned into the motivation for her to keep like trying to grow her power and expand her power, learn more about herself, to go on a quest kind of for vengeance, I thought it would be a great, that's where I expected the story to go. I expected it to be her kind of revenge arc. That would have been a super empowering, powerful growth moment for Brie, where <laughs> Hecate, the goddess, coming back, taking Brie's mom and giving her one month to bring her mom back to life is another diversion right now we're not we're pivoting we're not focusing on these people that are going to try and steal her power we're not trying to come to terms and understand the roots or the bounds of her power 
we're gonna focus now on bringing her mom back to life and collecting these six pieces of the absurdist heart just felt like another diversion and it felt like really convenient like you're about to be faced with something that's super super difficult and challenging and a major moment of growth but we're gonna give you an easy way out we're gonna let you go on this quest and bring your mom back and i was just kind of like it felt like a convenient ending and it felt like like i said like a diversion from all the other threads that we have going on that we're adding another thing to this pile of crap that brie has to deal with we're just adding another thing that she has to deal with and for me it a little bit felt like a way a convenient way to write another book or to make sure there was another book going and I just didn't like I didn't love the ending I was a little bit disappointed by that and I might be in the minority of that I looked at other reviews um for this book they were like this is the book that I needed that they were like blown away by the ending and for that reason is why I might not read the second one it felt like the things that were made pressing were never really addressed or finished out in the first book and they weren't also going to be the focus of the second one right like at the very end we learn that these gods are on earth and that's another thing that we're going to deal with in book two and I told you that you have to worry about all these people that are going to steal your power and what that looks like and we're not really going to mainly address it in this book but that might happen in book two and also in book two like i know i just killed off your mom but in book two you're gonna have the opportunity to bring her back it feels like we offloaded a lot of the meat of book one a lot of the main conflict issue that just there weren't time for in book one are all getting pushed into book two and i feel like it's just going to be even more distracted so for that reason I don't know that I'm gonna read book two because I don't know which plot I wanna focus on and I don't know which book, which one the book is going to focus on and it just feels a little bit disconnected for me. It feels like we tried to do a lot in one book and instead of doing a few things and following them through in a really consistent way, we broke off a lot of loose ends and are adding more things that we'll just we'll just figure it out in book two. Might be nitpicky, but it was just kind of like in the back of my head. Like we know that Marie is like 176 or like 376 or something. Um, that to me just feels weird for her to be the romantic interest of a 17 year old. Like I know, like it's very much the Twilight issue, right? Like Bella was 17, Edward was 300 and something. One is still technically a minor. Um, it felt a little bit weird. Like I'm like, I know you said you're gonna be 17 forever, but like also you're 376. Like next year we're gonna celebrate your 377th birthday. That's kind of weird. But I also didn't really love her as a love interest. She kind of creeped me out. Like she gave me kind of weird vibes. Unnerving, I think is the word I'm looking for. She's a very unnerving love interest. And I think that Brie is just like very into her very quickly. We'll see what happens. Um, but overall, that's my thinking is, I'm not in a rush to read book two. I just, the ending, like the last, I want to say 50 or 60 pages of this book kind of flopped for me, but I so loved the rest. And I kind of want to know what happens. Like, do does she succeed? Does her mom get to come back to life? I don't really know. I feel like I've been talking for a very long time. That's all that I have for you guys today. Those are my thoughts on This Poison Heart by Kaylin Barron. If you've read this book, let me know what you're thinking. Did you like the ending? Did you have the same kind of feeling that I did? What were your thoughts? If you haven't read it yet, do you want to? What are your questions? Let's talk about it. Let's talk about this book in this comment down below. Leave me the wilting rose emoji down in the comments down below. Let's talk about this book and I will see you guys in my next one. Have a wonderful day wherever you are and happy reading. Bye-bye.